How do you properly emulsify a salad dressing? Well, today on WTF, we're going to look at all the tips and tricks for six different types of emulsifiers and show you three great springtime salads. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. And here on WTF, every week we talk about unique ingredients and techniques and show you recipes that you can do in your own kitchen. So remember, subscribe and ring the bell, and you'll get notified of our content when it comes out next Tuesday. This week, we are covering the topic of how do you add an emulsifier to a salad dressing? because we have so many different types. Scott is going to walk you through, number one, what's an emulsifier, and also what are the different types, how and when you use them, and how do you substitute them, and how do you correctly add them to a salad dressing. So remember, um, stick around. At some point, we're going to be talking about this week's giveaway, which will be in a bag of emulsifier of your choice, which is very cool because you can pick any one of them. Now, to start with, um, let's start with the basics of what is an emulsifier, if you've never heard that word before. Yeah, so an emulsifier is something that we, we commonly deal with, but we just generally don't know what it is, mm -hmm. actually, right? So an emulsifier is a surfactant, uh, and what that basically means is it's going to coat either globules of water or oil, and it's going to allow them to kind of live homogeneously. Okay. okay? So when you're mixing up, uh, let's just say, vinegar, and it has a surfactant in it, and you start to add in the oil, it cuts those oil, uh, or it cuts the liquid into very, very small little beads, and the surfactant coats it, and it keeps it uh, living in there nicely. I can go into deeper, where you know there's a, uh, two ends of it, and one is in the water, and one is in the oil, but we don't have to worry about it uh, too much. Just know that it's going to cut it in there, and it's going to keep it in there homogeneously. Will it last forever? Will it last through heat? Not usually, but it's going to do its best to hold on to the oil. If it's a oil and water emulsion, it's going to do its best to hold on to the water if it's a water into oil emulsion. So you're going to need one of these if you're going to be making salad dressing or else you're going to have a broken salad dressing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's really nice to have one in your pantry just so that if you do make a gray salad dressing, you can keep it for like a few weeks or something yeah. without having to worry about waste and having to throw it away, yes. which is really nice. Um, so when we started thinking about salad dressings, and most, I think the first thing we thought about is the consistency of the salad dressing. Some of them are really watery, some of them are mm -hmm. super thick. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, kind of the role that the viscosity plays in a salad dressing and in picking an emulsifier? Sure. So if you want one that is going to be a little bit more free flowing, a little bit runny, you can pick something like a gum arabic or pick something like a soy lecithin, something that doesn't have a uh, heavy duty thickener in it. Okay. Right? Uh, gum arabic is a very, very mild thickener and soy lecithin is a great just emulsifier. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want to pick something like that. But if you want it to be a little bit thick, you can go with a perfected xanthan gum. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you do end up going with something that has a thickener in it, it has this really great property. So it's called fixotropic. And basically it's free flowing until it's setting on uh, a leaf or, or on something and it'll sit up really nicely. You can okay. see it on this salad, yep. right? Uh, there's nothing dripping off of any of these leaves. It's set until I start you know, moving it around and pouring it and then it will start to move. So it's a really great property to have with salad dressings, mm -hmm. especially one that you want to sit really beautifully on a dish. This one here has soy lecithin in it. It has a lot of shallots and it has a lot of herbs. So we want it to be a little bit more free flowing because it does have those thicker ingredients and it has like a lot of uh, um, items that can be suspended in it. But we don't want it to be you know, uh, too thick because then it'll just be like a glob of, of salad dressing and that's not what we want for that dressing. So it really depends on what your dressing is and what it needs. And this one here, we're actually going to be making one that does have some stuff that we want completely suspended. We don't want it to settle out. So we had to pick an emulsifier like a polysorbate. Mm -hmm. But we can also go through all of those and talk about like just the differences because if you look at all of them, you can see it, definitely see there's a big difference between each and every one of those kind of tests that we have there. Yeah. So when we did our picking, we ended up picking six of our most popular emulsifiers and testing them. There are definitely more emulsifiers out there. You can probably write a whole book about it. So we just picked the ones that we like to use yep. that are the most common. And then you can probably use all of these for different things as well. So 
Um, and just if you are looking at this and you're like, I don't know what Scott just said, there's <laughs> going to be a chart on our blog. Link yes. will be in the description below where you can actually see the properties of each one and read through it and decide at that point. Um, so do you want to talk about them? Sure, so yeah. it's, uh, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, this first one here, uh, which is not one of the six, is nothing. So you're gonna see, I did the exact same uh, method. I put in the vinegar, I poured in the oil slowly to try and emulsify it. And after three days, you end up with oil and yep. vinegar. And mm -hmm. that's it, it's a completely broken kind of control. Yep. So you see what happens if you don't have a surfactant. Okay. This here is gum arabic. And if you wanna kind of uh, mix through that with one of the spoons, gum okay. arabic, like I said, is a very mild thickener, but when you make an emulsion, you're going to have a little bit of thickening properties just naturally. Yeah. So uh, we, we did this and this is at 0.5%. Okay. Uh, so it's a very mild, but you get that really nice free flowing, mm -hmm. you get that nice sheen from the oil. Uh, and as you can see, they're all, they're all different, but this is a really nice one for salad dressings. Yeah, I, I think this one has a really great. nice cling to yes. it. I like And this it one. has uh, a very mild, like you don't get like a sliminess from it. It's a very mild texture as well. Mm -hmm. Then we move it to the next two. Now, one that I don't ha have up here is guar gum because it acts very similar to xanthan gum, but I wanted to show off xanthan gum because if you use too much xanthan gum, you end up with something that can be a little bit sticky. Mm -hmm. So this here is 0.5%. So imagine okay. half of 1% of your entire salad dressing is xanthan gum, and that's what it does to it. Yeah, it is that's very, very thick, thick. It is very mm -hmm. sticky. But if you go down to 0.1%, uh, which is an extremely small amount, which is the one right next to that one. Okay. This one almost like feels like mayo. Yeah. So if you were making like a, let's just say a plant-based mayonnaise or a, or a mayonnaise that you wanted to, you know, not use eggs in, you could absolutely use some xanthan gum. Just know that the texture is not, um, yep. at really high ratios cannot be super pleasant. But at 0.1%, so think about it, one-tenth of a percent of your salad dressing is xanthan gum, and you get this really be beautiful, free-flowing kind of dressing. Mm -hmm. So that's a great ratio for xanthan gum. It really is. So then yeah. we move into the uh, next one, which is polysorbate 80. Polysorbate 80 is what I'm going to be using over here for this okay. dressing that we're gonna be making in a moment here. And it's actually nice, if you use it as very low percentage, uh, something about a 0.5, mm -hmm. and you, you might say, well, the xanthan gum's at 0.5, so why is this different? They're mm -hmm. completely different ingredients made of completely different uh, items. So they're not going to work the exact same way. So none of these will be a one-to-one -one replacement for each other. Mm -hmm. But polysorbate 8, you can see, is the, the lightest in color, which means it has mm -hmm. a really great emulsification. The lighter the color, the better the emulsification. Good tip. Okay. Mm -hmm. The next one after that is actually 3%. So 3% of your entire recipe is soy lecithin. Okay. And I like this because it just barely emulsifies. Yes. It just barely emulsifies. It runs beautifully, but it does not separate. And if you give it a quick shake, if it does tend to separate, maybe after two or three days, mm -hmm. it'll you can shake it up and it will hold on to itself really nicely. Yeah. But you're not getting any, like a massive thickener or anything mm -hmm. like that. And the last one is 210S. This is a great one for the plant-based um, uh, like mayonnaise or if you're doing a really thick dressing. Uh, mm -hmm. This is at a, a slightly higher percentage. This is 1.5. Okay. So if you go a little bit lower at a one or even a 0.5, you'll get a different texture out of it. Right. I just wanted to show you that you can get that similar kind of gumminess out of it that you would get from a, uh, a xanthan gum. So yeah. like I said, a few tips, lighter the color, better emulsion, and then figure out what you're making. Mm -hmm. You'll know what you want to make it. Usually if you're creating a recipe in your mind, you have a vision. And if you want it to sit on the, the leaves really beautifully, or if you want it to run through the dress or through the salad really nicely, then you know pick out which emulsifier is gonna work for you. But we should get into our uh, recipe here so we can finish up our salads. Okay. Great, so very simply, I made some pineapple vinegar. I took some white distilled vinegar, put some fresh pineapple in it, a little bit of sugar, and I made some pineapple vinegar. If you wanted to, you can make it in an ISI. If you don't have one, you can just let it sit for a few days in there. I did it in about an hour in an ISI, which is a whipping siphon. I have some pistachios, so I'm making a pistachio pineapple vinaigrette. Mm. Okay. Some salt. There's already some salt on the pistachios, so I don't need uh, a ton of salt in this recipe, because if I did, uh, it'd be very, very salty. But do know that you're mixing in a ton of fat 
and there's a small amount of liquid in here. Mm -hmm. So then trying to add a, uh, a lot of flavor to the fat is difficult. So this needs to be nice and flavorful whenever you're making a salad dressing. Okay. Now this is about a one to one ratio. So one, one uh, let's say one cup of this mixture here to about one cup of oil. That is a very low ratio of oil. Usually you're going to go up to a, uh, two cups for a, a traditional French vinaigrette. So mm -hmm. two cups of oil to one cup of your vinegar or an American vinaigrette, which is three cups of oil to one cup of vinegar. This I'm doing a one to one ratio because I want it to be really intensely flavored for my salad here. It's got to stand up to uh, so some Thai chilies, some goat cheese and some roasted plums and some kale. So there's like big flavors in there. Mm -hmm. So I want it to stand up to all those flavors. If I'm going to be doing this, I'm going to be using polysorbate 80 because it's going to give me just enough emulsification, you know, to hold on to something that's at such a low water content. Okay. Right. So it's about 0.5% of polysorbate 80. And that's 0.5 to the, all the liquids yeah, and solids. Yeah, I do everything here and the oil. Okay. Right. Because I wanted to be able to coat some of the oil because it does go, it does uh, mix with both. So I'm going to put on the top of my blender here because I got some <laughs> solids in here that are going to bounce around. And I'm just going to mix this up until everything's just about ground. Once I start adding the oil, it's really going to grind up. Great. And you may be thinking, well, there's fat inside the pistachios. That's totally fine. I have the emulsifier in there. You're going to see a small emulsification start. Yep. So <laughs> when making an emulsification, go very slow with the oil. Okay. You don't want to just dump it in there. That's not how emulsification works. Right. What happens small if you amount. do that? If you from just like It'll just pour. separate no okay. matter how much uh, of an emulsifier you have in there okay. because you're, you're overloading it. You want to cut in a little bit of oil and it starts to understand what's happening and then it will you know, be able to kind of grow from there. But if I just dump this all in, might as well stop the episode. So as Scott is cutting in the oil, um, let's talk about this week's giveaway. So in order to win any of these emulsifiers that you see here, or if you have one that you want that's not listed here, but you know it's on our website under the emulsifiers category, you can enter to win one by leaving in the comments below your favorite salad dressing. Because um, I really, really enjoyed, and I know Scott as well enjoyed all the comments that people have been leaving on our episodes and all the great ideas. It's been wonderful to hear from you guys, so definitely keep going. It's nice. And if you have any questions about how to make or emulsify a salad dressing, leave that in there as well. We like hearing from you. So do you just kind of keep going on this until all the oil is gone? Yeah, you just keep pouring until all the oil is incorporated. And you can notice right here, it's a very kind of opaque color that's exactly what you want if it's extremely liquidy and bouncing all over the place it's generally broken okay right so you can see this is slightly thickened it's very opaque that's a good sign mm -hmm. and also if you uh, are tall enough you can see down inside and you'll be able to tell if it's broken or not. okay so don't worry Jamie. I know. we'll get you another box my props All right, so, so with the polysorbate 80, how long would this particular vinaigrette last in the refrigerator unbroken? <laughs> with polysorbate 80, uh, as long as you need it. Yeah. Polysorbate 80 is a great, great emulsifier. Other ones can be two to three days. Uh, something like a soy lecithin, you're going to see some noticeable separation, mm -hmm. right? Uh, something like a Dante gum, while it's a good emulsifier, you can see it immediately, some little bits of oil on top. But it's never going to completely separate like the control here. Okay. You know what I mean? If you see some on top, you can mix it in and it's going to kind of come right back to life. If you see it, just give it a quick shake. Uh, but polysorbate 80, you don't have to worry about it. Okay. So this is almost done. You see really how beautiful it is on the outside. It's nice and opaque. Yeah. So I think one question somebody might have is, you know, um, if polysorbate 80 works so great, why would I possibly want to use any of these other ingredients in, in a salad dressing? So that's fine. If you, if you like polysorbate 80 and that's what you want to use, that's totally fine. But if you wanted to have something that has, uh, you know, 
better thixotropic properties <laughs> and it's going to sit on the, the leaf really well, then go with the xanthan gum. It's going to be up to your dressing, what you want from it. Uh, everyone's going to want something different, but if you find one that you are in love with and it makes the salad dressings of your dreams, continue to use it. That's totally fine, yeah. right? And I think one common scenario is that if you've been with us for a while, you probably might already have soy less than in your pantry exactly. or xanthan gum. You're like, oh, this is another use for it. So definitely go for it. One of the really nice things that Scott did for this episode is that when you go to the links in the description below to get the recipes for the salads, Scott actually created different levels of ratios mm -hmm. for the different emulsifiers in order to achieve a similar consistency. Yes. Which is really nice. So they're not going to be like our test here, which is you know kind of all over the place in terms mm -hmm. of thickness. So if you are wondering, hey, I don't have polysorbate 80, I want to make this, but I have, um, so I less than, you can actually get that on the blog right now at blog.modernistpantry.com, link in the description below. Yep. So we have our beautiful dressing. Remember, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, but you can see the, the gorgeous color on it. And mm -hmm. then if I just drizzle it over our roasted pears, Thai chilies, baby kale, goat cheese, we have a wonderful and salad. And plums. Oh, that's what it is, plums. Did okay. I say pears? Yeah. Oh, wrong word. <laughs> Great, so we have that. Ooh. And then the other ones, so here we have a, a, a fennel salad with arugula, so it's just shaved fennel, arugula, parmesan, and then we have a, a wonderful dressing that I really love. It's kind of an Italian salsa verde, so it has uh, basil, tarragon, oregano, uh, some shallots in there, some red wine vinegar, and red wine reduced down, so you get a really big, bold flavor. Mm. kind of accentuates the anise flavor from the, the fennel. And then here we have a great spring salad, so it's just... Uh, parsley oil, lemon, so a really kind of like bright, vibrant vinaigrette. And then we have uh, just some mixed greens, tomatoes, peppers, and uh, black cherry. So all kind of mm. spring flavors. And a really light, you know, wonderful salad. And then a few different types of salads for you to try. Yeah, and I've tried them all. They are all delicious, I think. I don't want to, I don't want to say which one's my favorite. I don't want to sway anybody, but they were all <laughs> delicious. Um, so re remember, if you do want to win an emulsifier just to try, Try it out. Remember to leave in the description below. Sorry, what that? Leave in the comments below. Uh, <laughs> which one is your favorite salad dressing? And if you have any questions about emulsions, leave them there as well. You know, we do go through all the comments and uh, answer them to the best of our abilities. So, from, until next week, from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wei. And I'm Scott Garrett. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell so you get notified when we drop a new video. To get today's recipes and all of our recipes, remember to go to blog.modernistpantry.com where you get recipes, ask a chefs, tips and tricks, and more. And if you haven't already, tell a friend so they know what's going on here at WTF. And as always, to get any of the ingredients you saw today, you can go to modernistpantry.com to shop. And until next time, We'll be here in the test kitchen, helping you create memorable and magical experiences.